We seem to have another case of the Mondays. What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug. Welcome back to my 2K16, my career. Let's play Ebenezer's Revenge video series. And hey, would you look at that? There's Seth Rollins. I'll be discussing Extreme Rules and Wrestling News today. But let's see if this, this match is actually going to happen. Or if it's going to be interrupted by uh, Stardust, which is our current feud. So yes, both... Both things kind of in the news, uh, lately. Um, and, uh, yeah, nope, that's actually a match. I don't think that they would have, ever have Rollins on, uh, Superstars, but, you know, sure, why not? Hope you are doing well on this fine Monday afternoon, evening, uh, whenever you, whenever you happen to be watching this. Uh, it is, uh, the day after Extreme Rules 2016, so certainly I'll get into some of that, uh, briefly, but... Before that, there are a uh, handful of news bits that I wanted to get into that did happen over the course of the past, like, day and a half or so. Apparently, uh, it is my understanding, oh, Mr. Gefilte Flip, that Sasha Banks is injured again. And this time, it wasn't her fault. Apparently, a freak accident at a house show had a referee knee her in the head. So, obviously, they're going to be concerned with con con concussion issues, uh, like, you know, everybody else at, th at this point. So... That's a damn shame, because I really wanted to see the boss uh, get the women's title at SummerSlam, and hopefully she'll still be able to do that, but uh, right now she's just not on TV, which is a damn shame. When you're bringing up Dana Brooke, and you don't have Sasha Banks on TV, that's kind of, like, a waste, as it were. Um, what else? Uh, they did release Cody Rhodes from his... They, they, they put up the thing on... Uh, the website saying he is he has been released, so he requested it and got it. They didn't have to do that. Like they could have been complete dickheads and say, no, 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 you're gonna sit out the rest of your contract and like fucking WCW. You're gonna sit out the rest of your deal, and uh, you know you 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 can't you can't stop us. Thankfully, I think because he did this the the social media thing first, uh, they were like, this is bad PR. If if, if we keep him, this is bad PR. So, they were wise enough to not, uh, do that, which is good for them. Alright, so, with those two news bits out of the way, Extreme Rules was last night, uh, and I did watch it, obviously, because I do watch those things live, um, even though I don't watch Raw, Raw Live, but I, I, I do watch the, uh, pay-per-views, which, at this point, are just network specials. Anyway, the return... Of Seth Rollins, the architect of the Shield, uh, returned after the main event. Returned after Roman Reigns retained his belt because, of course, he did. I told you that was going to happen. Uh, and and speaking of which, uh, I got uh, all of my, my predictions except for one uh, were all accurate. Um, and the only one that I messed up was the IC title match. I honestly didn't think they were going to keep the belt on the Miz. Like I thought, okay, you know, Miz had his little run here uh, and. You know, it does work for the Miz being a beatable heel champion. Uh, and that match was easily best match on the card. Bar none. It was a great match. Uh, the ending, they kind of botched. And I will blame Kevin Dunn for that, because he fucking sucks. Um, they totally missed the pinfall in the ring. They didn't get it on camera. They screwed it up. And I'm like, how do you screw that up? Like, you should know what the ending is. How do you mess that up? So, that was a shame. But yeah, that match was Amazing, great stuff. You can't see me. You you can't see Ebenezer. He's you know doing that shit. Um, what else? Uh, that asylum match was mostly boring as hell. Now, granted, most of that crowd was what? Most of that crowd was just burned out from just getting so hot for that IC match. So I can I can kind of understand that, but it just like apparently they cut. A segment because they wanted to give more time to that asylum match which was I just didn't like it uh, but they did bring out the thumbtacks at the very end which they haven't done in a long time um, the hell ref um, but even having a sick thumbtack bump on Jericho at the end did not for me salvage that match which is kind of a long droning it was just not good I mean granted I'm not, I'm not a fan of cage matches in the in the in the first place, so that kind of didn't help. But I don't know. I, it just felt. And, and then of course they gave like eight minutes to uh, 
Natalia and Charlotte, you know, so it's like give the give the 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 give the other match more time and give that asylum match less time because it just went on and on and on. Anyway, um most of those matches kind of like I don't understand like for the finish it, it made sense, but I didn't understand why they had to have uh the pre show match with Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler have a no DQ. Like they barely use it, except for the finish, which was a nut shot. Um Pretty much uh I'm still of the opinion that uh they're only putting the belt on Rusev, the US belt to have John Cena win it next Monday night. Uh, honestly, at this point, Ebenezer. It's more shocking if they don't uh, put the belt on Cena next Monday night. That'd actually be more surprising. And there is our Superstars win over Seth Rollins. So, yeah. That would totally happen, right? Oh no, Renee Young, what could you possibly want to know? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, I guess I'm, I, I'm, I'm in the approval rating again for uh, the authority. I don't care. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. They don't call Triple H the cerebral assassin for nothing. I am one of the brightest superstars. Blah blah blah. But I did not get here Except for that time, I totally did and fought Sting at WrestleMania. That totally happened. Like you know, a <laughs> hundred episodes ago. Uh, back to you. Oh, hey, my rank increased. Where, where am I at now? Nine? Nine. So I'm now... What is the point of this Stardust feud if I'm already a higher rank than Stardust? That doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, boy. Well, we're still stuck in this feud, so not a whole lot I can do about it, I suppose. Uh, let us see what they have in store for us on the next episode of SmackDown. Um, what do we got here? Oh, Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Speaking of which, from the main event on Superstars to the opening match on SmackDown. We are just all over the place here. All over the place. So I think uh, getting back to my point that I was making earlier, um, I think it is uh, just the all the pieces are super, super obvious. You've got John Cena. You've got the U.S. title. It's Memorial Day, like, all those pieces kind of fit in such a way that if they didn't do it, that's kind of the most surprising thing in the world, because uh, that just seems like a thing that they would totally do. And then, then we're back to the John Cena Open Challenge, especially with the returning Seth Rollins last night, putting him immediately in that world title picture, so why would you bring back John Cena in a week and attempt to put him in that world title picture? I think he can. He, John Cena's place at this point in his career is uh, squashing up and coming mid carters um, and making them look good in a match but ultimately lose that match. I think it's kind of where he's at at this point. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be in the world title picture, but as I've been saying for months now, um, when, and it could be a while, but when they take the belt off of Roman, it's going to be either to Rollins. Or to Cena. Those are your two super obvious choices there. Um, I can't see it being anybody else in the near future. But also, I guess, you know, the next pay-per-view is Money in the Bank. So, who is going to be Mr. Money in the Bank? You know, is it going to be John Cena again? I doubt it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this year's Money in the Bank is a uh, big cast. That, that, that would not surprise me, considering how they, they seem to be very, very high on him uh, lately. But, that being said, um, there was, I, I, that, what else? What else? Oh, I, I did want to kind of talk a little bit about uh, the commentary last night. Which, for the most part, was kind of the usual same, you know, not-so-great commentary um, that they kind of had for a long time in their three-man uh, booth. But JBL, as their heel commentator, I have to say, when JBL had his initial run on SmackDown years ago with Cole, uh, it was really good. And then he, you know, went away, uh, and they brought him back. And he hasn't been as good since he came back. Like, the dynamic's not as good. But 
to be more specific, uh, JBL repeatedly wishing death upon Byron Saxton last night was kind of just too dark. Like, I'm a fan of good heel commentary. Like, that's, you know, classic Lawler, classic Heenan. Good stuff, you know. I've been watching, I've been, been watching wrestling a long time, you know. Paul Heyman, uh, there's been, th th throughout the years, there's been a lot of great heel commentary. But just blatantly wishing death upon your fellow commentators, it's just too dark for me. I don't know. It just, it just felt awkward. I mean, and compounded on the fact that Byron Saxon is not very good, so he, he didn't have any good, he didn't have any good comebacks for that. Like, he just kind of is so bland. It's just, you know, he had no way to refute JBL. And it feels like one of these days we're going to end up with a blue meanie situation and just um, getting his ass punched for real on air. And then fired, but you know, it would be worth it. He would be a legend. Because yeah, that's just, I don't know. And like, I know that a lot of that stuff is, you know, what you get from the headset from Vince. So like, I know it's not, not necessarily from JBL. But still, it just... I just got zigzagged? Come on now. Um, nope. Um, yeah, that, that stuff just kind of... It, it wasn't great. Like, when you want to look at really good current heel commentary, Kevin Owens is really good at his job. Um, and if he ends up, at some point, transitioning from a wrestler to a commentator, that'd be great. When, when they occasionally had CM Punk on, he was really good. Um, but just wishing death upon your fellow commentators is, is just not... It's too much. I don't know. It's too much. It just it, it doesn't work. Like, unless, it's, unless, unless that, that's going to go somewhere, and there's an angle involved, like, then, then it's fine. But he just kept going back to that well over and over again, and I'm like, what are you doing? Seriously. Anyway, otherwise, God, that was more or less my, my Extreme Rules impressions. That was, for me, well, like, obviously there was, you know, the match with the New Day, which was pretty predictable, and there was the match with the Usos, which was pretty predictable, and the main event was fucking, you know, they, they went kind of nuts with the table spots and everything else, so that was cool. Um, but, and, and, and Roman Reigns just trying so hard to get the internet to like him. And man, just the booze in that place. Obviously, it's New Jersey, and we're close to Philly, and close to New York. So that's the kind of crowd you're going to get that's going to just boo the shit out of Roman Reigns. Like, you know, you had to expect that. Um, and they're trying to mitigate that with, you know, Oh, well, if you love him or hate him, you, you're passionate. And I'm like, that's not really what they're booing, you guys. It's not. We kind of know it's not Roman for the, for the first thing. We're, we're booing the fact that He's, you know, the, the super obvious guy you're going to push in the face of the company when that's not who people actually want to see as a main event talent. Uh, and it's blatantly obvious that you're just pushing him as hard as you can to turn him into the next J John Cena. But there are a lot more folks that like John Cena than like Roman Reigns, so it doesn't really work. It's not, not, not quite the same situation as it were. Um, and, but yeah, the ending was, you know, what'd you expect? Seriously. Um, so, really, the, the icy match, like, if, if you don't watch anything else, watch that match. It was really good. Everything else, eh, kind of hit or miss. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, no, I didn't win by disqualification. Oh, well. Renee Young, am I, am I, am I back to being unfavorable with the authority? Is that what's going on here? I'm kind of going back and forth, so I kind of kind of keep getting these goddamn. Yup, see, same goddamn shit. I don't care. I didn't care when they liked me. I don't care when they hate me. I'm not gonna let them win. I'm gonna hit options here to skip this fucking crap again. Thanks for the time. Oh wait, what? Am I a heel again? What the fuck? No, no. I'm more ruthless. I'm tired of. God damn it! I'm a heel again. How did this happen? How could this happen? You have to be more aggressive, more ruthless. I can... There you have it. Back to you, Cole. 
No, I'm still a face. What, what, what was the point of that question, Renee Young? I'm still a face. I'm going to attempt to remain a face for the remainder of my, my career. But also, oh hey Pentagon Jr., I guess we're fighting again for like the 400th time. That's fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm a tax slug. More videos every day. And I will see you next time right here on this channel. In a mouth.